Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about the method of joints. So what are we looking for uh, in this method? So in the method of joints and for the method of sections and analysis of frames and machines, uh, we're trying to determine the forces acting on each individual member in a structure. So if each member is a two-force member, as it would be in a truss, which we are going to use for the, uh, which was what we are going to be analyzing, we need to find the magnitude of the force and whether or not the member is in tension or compression uh, in each piece. So each member is either going to be in tension with two equal and opposite forces pulling on it or in compression with two equal and opposite forces pushing together on it. And so the method of joints works on the following assumptions. Uh, number one, the structure you're analyzing is in st static equilibrium. So Number two, the members in the truss are connected to one another with pin joints. And so at these pin joints, uh, we can exert forces but no moments. That's going to be necessary for our two force members. Uh, number three, the pin in each pin joint is also in static equilibrium. So if we look at the joint or the kind of pin in the middle of the joint uh, for each piece, each one of those needs to have the sum of the forces uh, equal to zero. Uh, and finally, each member connected to the pin we either push or pull uh, along these pins in a known direction. The line of action of the force is going to be the line between the two connection points in the member. So for the method of joints, this is the process we're going to follow. Number one, we want to label all the joints if they're not already labeled. So generally we're going to use letters for this. So here I've got member or joint A, B, C, and D. And if I talk about the members, I talk about the two endpoints. So member A, B member BC, member AC, member BD, and member CD are the five members that are connected together at the four different joints in this case. Step two is going to be to treat the whole truss as a rigid body and solve for the external reaction forces. So I'm going to treat this whole triangle shape as a rigid body and I want to find the force in the X and the Y over here. I'm going to roller joint over here. This is to model a thermal expansion joint. Uh, I would have just a force in the y direction over here. So it's just a rigid body. We're going to use the sum of forces in the x is equal to zero, sum of forces in the y is equal to zero, and the sum of moments about some point, probably point A, uh, is equal to zero. So I should be able to solve for those reaction forces. All right, so once I figure out those three forces, I'm going to move on to the next step. So step three is we're going to separate the truss into individual joints uh, and individual members. So the joints, this is like the pin in our pin joint. So pin A, pin B, pin C, and pin D. Uh, and I've drawn in the known forces. So this three kilonewtons this is the reaction forces. Uh, the X force over here was actually equal to zero. So I've got the external reaction forces acting on my point. This is the load force in the middle acting on that joint there. All right, so next we're gonna draw in all the forces that each member exerts on the pin. Uh, creating a free body diagram for each of the joints. So we're going to assume tension uh, in the direction of each member. So I'm going to replace all the members with the forces and I get rid of the members in my diagram. So I've kind of drawn in uh, force AB going from A to B uh, in my diagram here. And so now what I have is a bunch of free body diagrams of the pins in my pin joints. And so from here, go on to the next step. So I've got my free body diagrams, and we're going to write out the equilibrium equations for each of the joints using the free body diagrams we just created. So we're only going to have force equations here, so no moment equations, because the pins are essentially um, going to be a particle. So we don't have any room for a moment. So we're going to have two possible equations per joint, the sum of forces in the X and the sum of forces in the Y at each joint. So last step is to start, start solving the equations. So we have, uh, we had five members, which means we have five unknowns. We actually only need five equations, uh, but we can see that we would have two, four, six, up to eight possible equations. So I've got more than enough equations to solve for the five unknowns that I have in my system. So using this, uh, you can either use a, an equation solver or if we start at a joint with only two unknowns and then work out from there, that's generally going to be the appropriate strategy. So uh, over here at A, I've got a known force and then two unknowns. 
So with two unknowns, two equations, I could solve for both of these. Once I know both of these values, this becomes a known value. I've got two more up here. I can solve for these two unknowns with the additional two equations at B. Um, now I've got, uh, this is known, this is known. I just have one unknown value here. And by the time I get to point D, uh, actually I already know these two values, so I don't need to use either of those equations. So if you start at one end of the, uh, one end, you can generally work your way across uh, any sort of truss. So start somewhere with two unknown forces and then work out from there. All right, so positive results in all of this indicate tension uh, in the member, and that's because we assumed tension. So if we assumed the right direction for these forces, we get a positive number. If we did not assume the right number, so since we assumed everything was tension, a, a negative number uh, in our equations, a negative result, indicates compression. So the forces, rather than uh, actually pulling like they are shown here, uh, say member FAB, I got a negative number, they'd actually be pushing on either end. And that means the member itself is in compression. All right, so method of joints and space trusses, how do we modify this? Uh, so if we analyze the truss in a three-dimensional rigid body system, we have a you know, reaction forces supporting the truss. So this is sometimes optional. Um, we can skip this step sometimes if we uh, have few enough uh, members uh, in the whole system. But we would have up to three force equations for the entire rigid body and three moment equations for the entire rigid body, which can get quite cumbersome. So optionally, find the uh, external forces first. Two, we're going to start at a joint with three or fewer unknown forces and draw a free body diagram of that joint. And so three uh, members now because we have sum of forces in the X, sum of forces in the Y, and sum of forces in the Z. So at each joint we have up to three possible equations and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to assume everything is tension up front. Uh, if we get a positive number as a result, it's actually tension. If we get a negative number as a result, we can assume it's compression. Uh, and then write out your equilibrium equations for that joint. Uh, and remember to use angles or the ratio method. So we've got two different methods for breaking down vectors in 3D uh, into our components for the X, Y, and Z force equations. And then just like before, we solve our equilibrium equations for the unknowns, uh, starting at a joint with three or fewer unknowns and working out from there, we can kind of work our way across uh, the, the truss, starting at one end and working our way joint by joint to the other end. Uh, in this whole process. So that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.